feeders for leopard geckos. We'll be talking about the pros and cons of different feeders for leopard geckos. First, what is a feeder? Short answer is that a feeder is what you feed your reptile. In the reptile community, the word is mostly used for insects. Although I suppose you can say that for salads too for those salad eaters. Second, what does dust or dusting mean? It means you're dunking or sprinkling your feeders with supplements. Third, what is a treat? In the reptile community, a treat is where a feeder is fed occasionally. And we're talking about like twice or once a month. That's occasionally. People think it means like once a week, but nope, it's once or twice a month. Fourth, what is a stable? In the reptile community, a stable is what you feed frequently. Now please note some people feed one feeder, which I'm guilty of too, but I have noticed during my research that you should have two to three feeders for variety and nutrition as not one feeder will be perfect in the nutrition values. And reptiles can and do get bored of one feeder here and there, so variety helps them not get bored. Dubia roaches, a small or big, depending on who you are, wiggly insect who, if they take after other roaches, can't drown easily and somehow are difficult to kill. Their pros are that they're nutritional, they have the most amount of protein, decent amount of fat, and right amount of moisture. They're easy to raise, repopulate, and most likely to catch a reptile's eye. Some cons are that you need small ones for leopard geckos. Big ones are too big and should only be made to make your own colony or dispose of them via a bigger lizard. They need food to keep their nutrition and to stay alive longer. They are indeed banned from some countries such as Canada. Florida and Hawaii, which yes, that is US, require a permit. I am not sure about other countries, so please research before buying. Hornworms, a worm that gets big very fast. The pros are it's easy to grow and might not need to dust as much. The cons are that they get higher in fat as they grow. They are low in protein, grow extremely fast, should be fed as a treat, and are not that nutritious. Black soldier fly larvae, aka BSFL, nutrigrobes, phoenix worms, gussy worms, and repti worms. The pros are that they are good size for leopard geckos, they don't bite, they're soft bodied, and they're very nutritious, hence the nutrigrub part and don't need to be gut loaded unless they're very small. Some cons include that they're hard to repopulate and are low in phosphorus. I'll explain the phosphorus later. Silkworms, what people usually use to harvest silk from. The pros, they are nutritionally consistent due to their diet of only eating mulberry leaves. Soft bodied, easy to care for and raise if you research. They are low energy, meaning they won't run across the floor and under your bed if they get loose. They have fatty acids that fight off diseases. Cons are that they're low nutrient, mainly in protein, can sometimes be too big or small to feed off, more expensive than other feeders, and they're often out of stock. They're a bit high in phosphorus. Some people think that these guys are difficult to keep due to their only eating mulberry leaves. Well, I'm happy to inform you, they're not. There's such thing as silkworm chow you can buy to make yourself or buy pre-made and you don't need the leaves because the chow is made of mulberry leaves. That makes it way easier. You can find that on dubiaroaches.com, Josh's Frogs, and coastalsilkworms.com or westcoastsilkworms.com. I prefer coastal or west coast silkworms Josh's Frogs frequently is out of stock, and I haven't tried buying from Doobie Roaches. Maybe Coastal and West Silkworms gets out of stock, but I haven't had a problem when it came time to buy Silkworms and their chow, and they were alive, and I had all a canon Silkworms, unlike Josh's Frogs, where most died and I didn't obtain all of them. Coastal Silkworms also gives you a Coastal Silkworm sticker when you buy from them. And no, I'm not being sponsored, I just love it. 
One thing to add is that skate proof bowls don't work for them, not the ones I have at least. Super worms, oh boy. Their pros are that they're easy to raise into beetles. They can get your skinny leopard gecko up to weight, but they're not that nutritious, so wax worms are better. And they're a good size for leopard geckos. Their cons are that they turn into their next stage of life very fast after buying them, at least from pet stores. They are very difficult to repopulate if you don't research it. They are hard shelled and can cause infection. They are high in fat and they are also a bit high in phosphorus. Let's take this time to talk about why you should subscribe to this channel. I am a Christian, so that means I make family friendly content safe for kids to watch. It's free. It helped me out a lot, especially with motivation. Y'all did an awesome job on getting us at 100 plus subscribers, by the way. These videos take a while to film, make, and research about thoroughly. Of course, the research will never stop. It would help you know more about your pet and learn about stuff that will help you with caring for them properly. You'd know every time I upload, especially if you do notifications. You won't have to search up Pixel Zoo every time, you just have to press subscriptions and watch the next video with no hassle. I also just have cute pets that you can enjoy whether you want to learn or just kick back and watch. If you're curious, I do have another channel called Pixel's Undecided Niche and an Instagram called Pixel's Corner. I'll link that all in the bottom of the description above the hashtags. Mealworms. Very close to superworms. Their pros are that they're easy to raise into beetles and they can get skinny leopard geckos up to weight, but waxworms are still better. Cons are that they turn to the next stage of life very fast if bought from pet stores, difficult to repopulate if you don't do your research, hard shelled which means they can cause infection, small and must be fed in larger amounts, and they're a bit high in phosphorus also. And they indeed bite. Superworms do too. Oh, and they also commonly freeze up so leopard geckos overlook them. So do superworms. There's a ton of reptile owners that only feed the reptiles, not even just leopard geckos, but any reptile. They feed mealworms and superworms only. This isn't a good idea. They're not good to feed as a stable and should only be fed as a treat. As said earlier, it's an excellent idea to have variety anyway. They can also make your leopard gecko very obese, and you don't want that either. Crickets. More specifically, I'm going to be talking about the banded crickets. Their pros are that they're nutritional and are only noisy if it's time to repopulate. Their cons are that they don't live long at all if from pet stores. They're hard to keep alive and they're prone to drowning in the water you give them. Will sometimes freeze when about to be fed off, and they can bite if left in your reptile's enclosure, especially if there's more than one. I don't care if your lizard prefers hunting, tongue feed with rubber tip tongues, or let it loose one at a time watching your leopard gecko hunt. Don't leave them alone. One thing to add is that escape proof bowls don't work for them, not the one I have at least. Wax worms. Pros are that they're soft bodied and a good size. Great for leopard geckos that need more fat. I recommend these more than mealworms and superworms. Cons, they are high in fat, die fast if from a pet store, and leopard geckos tend to dislike them more than the rest of the feeders, but sometimes they'll be addicted. This should also be fed as a treat if your leopard gecko does not need more fat. Otherwise, feed along with a stable feeder. Butterworms. Where do I even start with this one? Good things first, I suppose. They're soft bodied. Yep, only good thing I know about them. Cons, you cannot repopulate them due to them being considered a pest as adults. And if they get into the wild somehow where they don't belong, they can be very destructive. They're so high in fat that doobie roaches isn't even gonna be selling them anymore for the same reason as phosphorus. They are high in that too. They also can be very addictive and hard to get reptiles to stop craving. Here's a Dubia Roaches Feeder Nutrition Guide. I'll link the blog where you can find it in the description. I crossed out fruit flies because they're extremely hard to take care of and not ideal for leopard geckos to eat. The numbers on the right over here are the ratios of nutrition of the calcium and phosphorus. 
I got this by dividing the phosphorus number by the calcium number. For example, doobie roaches, I divide 2,600 by 800, and then I got the 3.35, which is our ratio. The ratio we want for feeders is 2. If I did that wrong, let me know and give me the real answer. I am not a math person. It was either dividing it in the order I did, or dividing it the other way. The order I did made more sense. The like conclusion. Looking at the nutrition of the feeders side by side, the crickets, doobie roaches, and BSFLs are the most nutritious to provide. BSFLs would be fed less than the doobies and crickets in this rotation, but it's still nutritious enough otherwise. I picked multiple because variety is best. I personally, from doing even more research for this video, will be doing a combo which will be consisting of silkworms and dubia roaches, maybe with some BSFLs here and there. I have tried raising crickets and it did not go well. And I'll just have to buy BSFLs as I'm not able to raise any at this time. Phosphorus and calcium don't matter too much as long as you're dusting your feeders, but don't give it too much or too little calcium. There are ways of telling if your leopard gecko is high or low in calcium. Notes. Prices vary on the seller and where you are. Always research how to keep and repopulate before making your own colonies or even having feeders in the first place. Search up if a feeder is legal to have where you are. Take into consideration what others will think if you have people living in your house with you. Maybe insectivores wouldn't be the best animal for you to have due to that person having an insect phobia. If you are grossed out by insects, get over the phobia before getting your insectivore. Because if you have that phobia and can't go over it, you will have a starving insectivore. Nutrients also vary in what you feed your feeders and how you dust them with supplements. Feeders that I am aware of currently are the following. Amazon.com, you can just search them. Westcoastsilkworms.com, dubiarochas.com, or coastalsilkworms.com. It's also Josh's Frogs, your local pet store. Be aware these typically don't have good quality feeders, just like their animals. Your local feeder store typically will have good feeders. Your local exotic animal and reptile store will most likely have good quality feeders. I will put links in the description box below. Thanks for watching everyone. I'm so proud of y'all for getting 100 plus subscribers. That means so much I can't explain it enough.